Hello, hello, and welcome to or welcome back to Into the Nothing with your favorite host, Patrice. And on this episode, I have my sister's coach, (laughs) Alexis. Welcome to Into the Nothing. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited. Alexis and I have been having a few phone chats over the last couple of weeks because my sister, Lindsay, who if you listen to the last episode of Into the Nothing, it was with Lindsay and I'm still dumbfounded by who she is and what she's created. I'm her sister, but being in an interview or being in a a podcast episode, I got to get to know her a little bit more and hear her views and just like, she's, she's so spectacular. And Lindsay connected Alexis and I in an email and said, Patrice, you've got to get Alexis on your podcast. And so Alexis and I have been having a few phone conversations and we get along like a house on fire. We have so much in common and I've learned so much already. And I thought that getting Alexis on this podcast was going to be so valuable to you if you are struggling with your confidence right now, if you are feeling a bit lost, maybe you felt really confident in the past and now you're in a chapter of feeling lost, of struggling with your self-worth. I also want to speak to Alexis today in this podcast about imposter syndrome because I know that we all feel it in different ways. And I think that it ties in beautifully with feeling lost and struggling with our confidence and, and yeah, feeling out of our body and not feeling confident and grounded in who we are. And we're also going to talk about finding our purpose and what that means. And I think sometimes we overcomplicate that and what that can look like. And so When I spoke to my sister about these kind of themes, she said, you've got to get Alexis onto your podcast. And we've also invited Alexis into the program that we're running called Centred for Success, which is for women in regional and rural Australia who want to take their leadership to the next level, who want to feel calm, clear and capable, confident in who they are and what they're doing so they can live their best lives. And so Alexis, let's go for it. Let's start at where I started to talk about the themes today. And let's talk, start talking about hearing your view on confidence and those periods in life when we feel lost and we're struggling with our self-worth. I'm sure you deal with people all the time because you are a coach and you're a human. And so you deal with this within yourself. What would you what would you say to someone who's coming to you and it's like, oh my God, Alexis, I just I don't have any confidence right now. I've just been made redundant for my job. I didn't see it coming, or I've had a fight with someone at work, and yeah, my relationships aren't great, and my my confidence has taken a big hit. So thank you for having me on the show, and I'm really super excited to be here and share all of the things. So when it comes to confidence, it's interesting. So I went out on Wednesday this week and caught it with a friend that I haven't seen in a really long time. And he's like, how's everything going? I said, oh, the last three months, my confidence has really taken a hit. He said, are you serious? You're the most confident person I've ever met. Like I see you and you just ooze confidence. And the thing that happens when we show up, we can create a character that when we're around people that oozes confidence and is that person. But then we can, like um, Renee Brown had, the vulnerability hangover after she did her big talk and she'd created this big talk and she got up there and it was just completely different from what she'd planned to do. And so what it comes down to for me and confidence is clarity. So when you have clarity on where you're heading, so if you don't have clarity, you're feeling a bit wobbly, things feel like they're falling apart around you. It's taking that step back and slowing down and really having a look at and doing an audit on your life of where have I been? Where am I am? Where am I now? And where do I want to be heading? And as we move through peeling back the layers, and it's really hard to go, well, what do I want? When someone says, what do you want? It's like, I don't know. So then you sit down and go, okay, well, what don't you want? What parts of your world don't you want? What is it that doesn't feel good? What are the things that do feel good? Who are the people that you do want to be hanging around? Who are the people that you don't want to be hanging around? And this week I did my biggest sale to date and leading up until that sale, I had to get out all of my wobbles and I went and told someone about this sale that I made. And then all of the questions came. I'm like, there was not even a celebration or a congratulation. It was just like, bam, bam, bam. And so knowing who to share your wins with 
knowing who to share your goals with and your dreams and your aspirations. Because if you're telling the wrong people, you're going to continue getting pulled down and pulled down and pulled down. And they're not going to support you because their fears, their stuff, they're projecting onto you or they're wanting to keep you safe and protected because they don't want to see you get upset or hurt. And so I know you just had the biggest sale that you've ever had. And what did that take you? What conversations were you having with yourself? Because you said in the in the lead up to that, I know before we hit record on this podcast, we were celebrating that sale. And you were saying that in the weeks leading up to it, you had to have conversations with yourself and come back into yourself. And that if you had attempted to have the conversation with that client five weeks ago, it wouldn't have gone in the same way. Can you can you speak into that? And then the clarity that you had to get into within yourself for that sale to be effortless. Yeah. And so one of the biggest things, and we've spoken about this on our phone calls, um, is doing a brain dump and free riding, getting all the noise and the conversation out. And it doesn't need to make any sense at all. And, you know, like I sat and was just in myself, there's been a huge amount of tears. There's been a huge amount of frustration. There's been a huge amount of self-doubt. And can I actually really do this? Will someone pay me this amount of money? Do I have the skills and the tools to be able to do this? When I know that I took this client from 40K months to 80K months within four weeks and now we're exponentially growing and it's he already said what does it look like we, we need to start working to get like we need to talk about what it looks like to work together again about five weeks ago and I said well your contract's not up until October he's like really I thought it was now I said no it's not until October so I knew that I had a bit of a leeway in regards to he's ready to go he wants to work with me again because he's already put that out into the universe but for me to really pull together what that package and program look like for him and for me to fully own the work that I do and knowing that it is going to support him and his team. And so one thing that I do love to do is getting into character. And I was talking to a friend the other day about, he's like, so what is it that you do? And I said, have you seen Billions? It's like, no. I said, well, there's a woman on there called Wendy and she is the psychologist for the the company and so anyone that's got any wobbles or anyone that's got anything that goes on they go and see her so that they can sharpen their tools and then they can get back out and they can be on and then not distracted by personal stuff or office interactions and so I just started to embody the energy of Wendy and really just start going okay well how would Wendy do this how would she Step, like walk into a room like she's powerful and she's this and I'm like that is who I am and so what you see in other people you have in yourself but if you if you see power and confidence and amazement in others, it might just be your little pilot lights just a little bit dim. So what we want to do is turn the heat up on the pilot lights so that you can expand into that. And it's coming back down to the clarity of what it is that you're offering somebody or the clarity that you're bringing into a relationship or having a conversation with someone like knowing exactly what it is. So a couple of weeks ago, Someone sent me something and I got really triggered, but I thought that I'd already moved through this stuff and I fired off and I was really reactive, which is something I haven't done in a really long time, especially on text message. And then I went, have a shower, got out of the shower and I just sent a message and went, I didn't even, I didn't say, I didn't apologize until in person, but in the text message, I just wrote, you ruffled my feathers. And they were like, okay, get it. Something's clearly happened. What I've sent has triggered you. And so knowing more about you, so I've done a lot of work with um, researching around what Bob Proctor's body of work and the more that you know you, the more that you understand other people. So really getting to know who you are, sit down, take yourself out to breakfast, take yourself out to lunch, take yourself out with your with your, a journal, put your phone away, get yourself a glass of wine or a tea or a coffee, whatever time of the day it is, or a juice and sit and have a conversation with yourself and journal, get it out and ask yourself, if I was to be really honest with myself right now, What is it that I want to be bringing to life? And if you feel a little bit stuck, ask yourself, well, where am I lying to myself? Where am I lying to myself about certain things? And play with different questions because the higher level question that you ask yourself, the better the answer you're going to get. So if you keep asking yourself, why is this not working out? Or why do these conversations keep happening? Take a step back and go, okay, well, what is the conversation I'd I'd prefer to be having with these people? Who and how do I want to show up? What parts of me that are now I'm ready to let go of? 
what parts of me do I want to expand? Because it's not about becoming, it's not about becoming a different person. It's about becoming more of who you already are. Because the person who already has the things is already here right now. It's about releasing and removing. And years ago, my one of my coaches, she sent me this um, YouTube clip and it said, it read, how do lobsters grow? I was like, that's a bit fascinating, but I must have been having a moment and she's just like, I'm just going to send this to her. So a lobster is little when it's grown and then it has to crack off its hard shell so it can build a bigger shell so the gooiness inside can grow bigger and then it gets to a point where it outgrows it so it has to crack it off, hide behind a rock, and this comes into burnout, is that we do have to slow down and come back into self and allow yourself to, like, what are the things that fuel your cup? What are the things that give you energy? Like for me, it's getting in the ocean, no matter what time of the year it is, getting into the ocean, even when it takes my breath away, I know that that refuels me. And I did it a couple of weeks ago for the first time in ages. And one of my girlfriends goes, something's changed. I went, I got in the ocean this morning. Like I knew it. <laughs> I could feel that your energy was just because I reconnected to nature and nature, as you know, is the biggest and the best way to be able to refuel yourself and connect back into self and disconnecting yourself from social media, disconnecting yourself from the need to, oh, who's calling me? Oh, I need to answer that phone call or I need to pick up my phone and look at that message or whatever that looks like. You're continually revving yourself up on the inside. And when you allow your nervous system to settle, sometimes it takes a little while for your nervous system to settle and it can feel uncomfortable because it's the unknown. Alexis, you have hit every single reason why I have called this con- this this podcast <laughs> into the nothing. I'm sitting here and literally my mind's going, check, check. I'm going to ask her about that. And then you, then you touched on it. And so I want to reiterate some points that I'm so passionate, passionate about that you've shared so beautifully that I believe is what truly creates success is going into the nothing. Meaning for me, I love the, the idea that genius loves isolation. We can't hear ourselves when we've got all the noise of the world going on, when we are so connected to our phones, when we are so busy, when we're in that burnout because we're saying yes to everything and we haven't taken time to get to know ourselves, to go into the nothing, which in this busy Western world is simply spending time on our own. And that's one way to do it. And I I haven't thought of that before of taking yourself out to lunch or taking yourself out for dinner or spent just spending time on your own so you can hear your own inner signal of what is the thing, the impulse, the natural impulse, the thing that lights you up, the the purpose or whatever that that thing is for you. We can't hear it when we're so cluttered and so chaotic. And yeah. so going into nature, like you were saying, it, it's the same for me. I, I live in Brisbane and there's a small bushland. It's so bizarre near where I live. I live right just out of the city and there's a small bushland near my place and it is it is so mind-boggling to me that it it's there because when I'm in there even though it's so small I feel like I'm in the full-blown bush like I could be a couple of hours out of Brisbane in the middle of nowhere because it's so dense with proper Aussie bush and for me in COVID that was my saving grace when we couldn't travel much we couldn't move around much and so for me and, you know, all of the hysteria that was going on in the world and making decisions about our bodies and what we're going to do. And for me, I kept on going back into that place and breathing and connecting. And like, if I connect into my body and I often connect into my, my center, into my hips to feel centered and grounded, I have a big cry in that bush. And then I'm like, okay, when I've come back to some peace and I felt what I needed to feel, what does my inner voice say when I'm in nature? And when I'm in some sense of stillness, what do I take action on there and trust that voice? So for me, there's so many ways to go into the nothing, but the core aspect of it for me is definitely what you were saying, spending time in our own and nature. And of course, for me also, it's meditation, but they're the three core pillars. And I don't think we can do that enough. Do you, do you have anything to share around? I can see. Well, when you said having a big cry, so it would have been borderline COVID starting and because it was and I'm so connected 
there's there was a big energetic shift that was happening and I went through quite a lot of trauma about 10 years ago from now so then would have been maybe six years ago and um I couldn't stop crying but literally could not stop crying and I was like why am I crying why am I crying why am I crying and so I ended up going and seeing a hypnotherapist and she said to me you have so much stuck emotion in your body it's releasing through your tears just think of yourself as a volcano I went okay so whenever I cried and I was crying at least 10 times a day like I'm not even like I just stand there and just someone would look at me the wrong way and and it wasn't like it wasn't hysterical but tears were just coming out of my face and it probably lasted about two months and I will never forget my daughter she must have been I don't know seven or eight um and I was crying and she turns to me and then she looks at my mum and my sister and oh don't worry about her she's just a volcano she's just that's her second one for the day we've got more to come and I was like oh (laughs) but allowing yourself to feel those emotions allowing yourself to cry and not judging yourself for crying oh I have an emotion oh I need to judge that no you don't need to judge it feel it the more that you feel your emotions the more you accept that you're human that you are allowed to have these emotions because when you're looking at social media you don't see the shit show that happens behind the scenes and like I was saying like with my mate like he literally sees me show up with a big smile on my face laughing super loud and everyone turns around and has a look because I just get involved when I'm out with people but I do go you know you've got a cocoon like on a Sunday when I don't have my daughter I just have such a really crazy day I get my computer I pull it into my bed and I watch a movie doze in and off on and off and then I go for a walk along the beach and then I go sit and I'm just by myself but one thing about what you said around disconnecting and going into the bush is that I know that when I love going on holidays where there's no reception and my whole business explodes because I'm, you have to disconnect. There's no other way to connect with anybody other than being present in that moment with the people. And so one of my clients at the moment, I've got him going for a run without his phone. And what's been interesting and to witness and watch, he goes, I, I can't not go. I need to have music. I need to have this. I said, no, no, no. We're going for a run with no phone. We're di- properly disconnecting. You're just taking your house keys. He started to get sick. He's getting sick because he's cracking open to a new level of himself because he has to go within. He has to be with himself mm-hmm. on the when he's out of the house by himself, when he's on his run, because there's no one to have a conversation with. There's no noise or distraction distracting him. So it's the the thought process and allowing everything to bubble up. And it's really beautiful to witness and watch because I've been there before in the past, but because I've moved so far forward now, it's interesting to witness and watch someone else go through that process. So learning how to sit in silence. And that's why I love meditation so much. Every morning I get up and I sit in presence for 40 minutes with the diff- with, with the energy centers or different parts of my body moving up from my base all the way to inside my head. And it it is honestly the most life-changing practice I've ever done. And I've done it for, yeah, two years now. Uh, since 2022 June, I started this specific meditation. And before I went to India earlier this year to support a group of women on retreat, I was doing it from three to seven hours a day. It's something in my intuition was like, you're going to go all the way. And for most of that time in the last couple of years, I have simply been sitting in my own shit. <laughs> it has been <laughs> so in tense I feel like I'm sitting in a power station of energy of discomfort of wanting to get up I feel like I'm training the wildest stallion to stay still in it's chaotic and intense and uncomfortable and I'm just love it it's now I love it for a long time I hated it but I something in me knew that I had to do it and also Alexis when you're talking about your client that you have now running without his phone, which sounds so simple, but in today's society is revolutionary. (laughs) Um, In 2021, I decided to not get another phone contract. So I went for 10 months, which my family hated and Ted, (laughs) my partner hated, but I went for 10 months without having a phone. And I couldn't do it. I was, I was fried. My Ted had had a big accident in 2019 and I'd been through, I was in a lot of like PTSD, a lot of stress from it. Um, but the greatest gift, and I started to make decisions around letting things go. I, I didn't wear makeup for a year. I didn't have a phone for 10 months 
And it meant that it was so fascinating because, for example, when I would go to visit a friend who lives an hour away from Brisbane and I'd never been to her place before, I would, when I was in Wi-Fi, I had a physical phone but not a contract, so no service when I left the house. And so when I'd leave the house, when I had Wi-Fi, I'd put in their address to get from A to B, have all on the way back, no Wi-Fi. It was pure intuition <laughs> to get back. And you realise how much you can just get to places without a phone. And yeah, trust you think, yourself. Oh, so fun. You get there in some way and also you realise how resourceful you are because if I did get lost in the car getting back, I could pull over and ask someone how to get to the closest highway to get back to Brisbane. Like it's not rocket science, but it's interesting how much I've became dependent on my phone. So into the nothing, we're, we're really deep in it in the most tangible way, which I'm loving. So in terms of into the nothing, I want to go into this next question I have for you, imposter syndrome, that feeling when you don't belong, you don't, again, it ties in beautifully with not feeling confident, not backing yourself, feeling like you don't belong maybe in a room when you're in a meeting at work, just going, I don't belong here, I know nothing. How do you support your clients when they have that feeling? We were actually talking about this yesterday with your sister and um, she's like when you walk into a room, people just know you. Like they know who you are now and they're just like, they want to have a conversation with you. They're like, oh, you need to go speak to Lexi. You need to go do this. And rewind back until I decided, like fully went in on myself. I went, you're running a business. You're going to women's, I was going to women's um networking group I barely had it like two cents in my bank account and I'm like got my red lipstick on very similar to what I've got on now black singlet top black jacket my black jeans and high heels in my 2007 Yaris and I'm like wanting to hide my car from embarrassment of oh my god how when they see my car they're going to judge me and say we can't work with her because of the car she drives. Mm. And we know she has no money in a bank account. As if they know how much money I have in my bank account. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've felt that so strongly. I feel like so many people listening will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that story. And it's fascinating. And I still to this day drive my 2007 Yaris. And I was talking to a friend the other day and I said, I spent $70,000 last year on my personal development and building my business where I could have bought a car for the external world to see that I drive a nice car, but then I wouldn't have got the learnings that I got to be where I am today to be able to make the sale that I made this week. So it's under, and this is where it comes back again to understanding who you are. Sometimes there's a little bit of embarrassment that comes through and not much anymore because I actually don't care what anybody thinks about me. I know my work is powerful and I know the work that I do with my clients is transformational but we've got to get down to the root cause and have a look at who you are and how you view your life in everyday life and how you decide that you want to show up. Like I've got a call cool outfit that I wear all the time, black jeans, black singlet top, black jacket. Like that is who I am. It's like, you know, I don't have to think about anything because this is who I am and this is how I, sometimes I put a skirt on or put black shorts on depending if it's summer or not. Um, but very similar, I, like this is who I am and this is how I get dressed. And so that moment that I walked into this networking group and this is something that I really have nailed on an energetic level and I teach my clients this, is when you walk into a networking room, you don't need to be speaking to everybody. You don't need to be giving your business cards out to everybody. Before you go into a, an event or go into a networking room, before you leave the house or you can do it in the car or at a coffee shop before you walk in, get your journal because I don't go anywhere without at least one or two journals in my handbag <laughs> just in case. <laughs> the amount of pens that I go through in a week is ridiculous. Um, and get all the wobbles out. Who am I? Who am I showing up as today? Who am I being in this moment? And who are those two people that if I was connected to them, I could have really yummy, juicy conversations. Now, this is not who can, who are my next two clients? Where am I getting money from? This is who am I having two yummy, gorgeous, delicious conversations with? Because you don't know where that's going to lead. And you also don't know who they're going to be. And they could be the person that you might need to help you in your journey, or it could be vice versa, or it could be a collaboration. 
you don't know, but you don't want to put that out to the universe and be really strict and solid because your energy is off. But if you're going in in a really loving, gorgeous, this is who I am. And I'm connecting with two amazing people. And um, I remember when I first sat down with your sister and we had a, we blocked out three hours and by two hours, we'd exhausted everything that we needed to go through. <laughs> I can imagine you two together. It would be, again, a house on fire. Anyway, we, <laughs> I'd, I said to her, we've well, got another hour. We can sit here and we can play around or and she goes, no, no, I want to do the things that I need to do. And then I've got, got to leave. And I said, yeah, no worries. So I've got to go somewhere. So off I toddle to go wherever I'm going. And I get a phone call from her. <laughs> I was like, Why is she calling me? Like, what did I do? <laughs> What's going on? She goes, what the? I go, what do you mean? She's like, you know how we're talking about that person? She's like, I literally got in the lift and they were there. And I'm like, of course they were. Because everything is energy when we clean up the energy. And that's why disconnecting yourself from everything, because you're really in tune with the universe, God, source, the galactic team, whoever you talk to, things just start to drop in and people start to show up and they've always been there. These people have always been there. You just haven't had them in your awareness to be able to see them and have that conversation. So talking about imposter syndrome, it's about creating that character that you want to be and then pretending that you are the main character of your life as if you're in a movie and go and be that person. And the more that you show up as that person every single day, the more you embody it, the more that it, you ground it into it, and the more you start to go, oh, this is who I am. This is what I do. People know me because of blah. What I've learned too with these kind of decisions and, and becoming or owning that version of ourselves, that's who we are underneath all of the, the BS often, is that... For you to take that moment before walking into a networking event, for example, where you said having a journal, getting the wobbles out, writing that down and then getting clear on who am I going to be when I walk into this room and to be that intentional woman is that it takes sacrifice. It takes not scrolling on social media in that moment. It takes dropping some habits to own, become these other habits that are powerful, that make that create results that make a difference in our lives and in our family's lives and in our clients lives it's that next level of letting something go like scrolling or you know for example mucking up our energy when we're bitching about someone or you know calling my sister and and bitching about family members and everything and being in that energy and then going into a networking event it's starting to get really intentional and dropping some old habits to become this truer version of ourselves yeah and it is, it's living intentionally. Like the very, every Monday morning, my clients know, and some clients beat me to it. What is your focus? What is your intention this week? And who are you being? Every Monday, they get a message before 12 o'clock, depending on what I'm doing in the morning and how chaotic it's been with my daughter. Um, and what happens in that moment is it's like, oh, who am I being today? Or when my clients are going to a networking event, I'm like, call me. Like, let's have a conversation. Let's clean it up. And this is one thing we are talking about just before we got on. Um, I didn't mention this, but one of my clients, she used to work in corporate and she was the only woman in a whole room of men. And she all, and she's only short, God love her little cotton socks. And she always felt that she needed to be raw and, you know, bite back. <laughs> so we cleaned up her energy around her and we softened her. And pe- men that were never wanting to speak to her, she allowed them to come in because she was in her feminine in a corporate in a corporate way where she was speaking a truth she was standing in a power she was being kind it was a win win for everybody and she was confident in the delivery of what it was that she wanted because again it all comes back to clarity she came she had clarity on what it is that she wanted to achieve we had clarity on who she needed to be in that moment her clarity on the energy of owning that she knows her stuff mm-hmm. she doesn't need to feel shrunken and small on the inside she could still, she could feel powerful and magnetic on the inside. And it's the inside feeling that you feel like, you know, when you walk into a room, you're like, oh, 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 something's going on. I don't know who it is, but you can feel it. Or you can walk into a room, you're like, oh my God, there's, there's a vibe here. Like there's a, a proper, proper vibe. And so you get to shift and change that from the inside. You have the power of your internal representation and your internal power and your internal vibration and frequency. 
that changes the frequency of the room because you are that powerful when you are really focused and intentional about what it is that you want. I feel like your message is so clear and and some things that are, I'm so passionate about too, but you've really elevated it into, you know, networking, which we all, it's part of life, being with other humans, whatever job you're in, whatever role you're in. But getting intentional sounds like it's, it's a, an important part of this, spending time on our own, journaling, spending time writing down when we're on our own, what's going on for us. And what were those three questions that you ask your clients at the beginning of every week? Because I'd love for anyone who's listening to write them down. And that could be one easy way for you to start to feel clearer in yourself, start to dissolve that feeling of being an imposter and feeling lost, of spending time on your own and getting intentional, getting clear, like Alexis keeps saying. So what are those three questions, Alexis? So what is your focus this week? Mm -hmm. So what do you want to be focusing on? And it could be anything. It could be your health. It doesn't have to necessarily be anything to do with business either. It could be that my focus is I want to focus on following my joy and my happiness. Like that could be what it is. Or your focus could be I'd really love to have 10 epic conversations with potential clients this week. Whatever that looks like for you, it, it, it doesn't have to be huge. But when we do it on a weekly basis and you, you've, do this 50 times, 52 times a year and you're dropping into what are you focused on this week? What's your intention? Like how are you living intentionally this week and being aware? Like for myself, when that person ruffled my feathers, was not in intention, I wasn't in focus and I wasn't being in of the present moment until I had a shower and allowed myself to just become resourceful. Don't be reactive anymore, Alexis. And so I just went, you ruffled my feathers. And then when we saw each other in person, we had this really beautiful conversation that I didn't cry about, which in the past I probably would have cried, but I owned my truth and I owned the fact that, yeah, I was not a very nice human in regards to my messages, but he had no idea that that was going to be the reaction. And I didn't know, like looking back on it, I'm like, whoa, that was a big reaction for something that probably didn't necessarily need it. We're human. We're going to react. But it's about having that in the awareness of knowing. So my questions are, what is your focus this week? What is your intention? And who are you being? So when you can, and you can even ask yourself that every single day, like, what's my intention today? How do I want to show up today? Who do I want to be today? What kind of juicy conversations do I want to have? Who, if I connected with them, I'd be like, yes, this is yummy conversation. That's bringing me back into the present. That's expansive. That is I could potentially learn something, you know, like every conversation that I have, I'm always learning something from that other person by asking a high level question and questions, 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 questions. If you don't understand something, go and ask the question. And when you're in a networking room or when you're standing up, when you're in a um, like practice looking at people in their eyes, I really struggled with this for a really long time. And if you're struggling to look at people in the eyes and have that confidence to own what it is that you want to start saying, talk to yourself in the mirror and go, oh, oh, that feels uncomfortable. Oh, And like I said, with this big sale that I had, I was talking to myself in the mirror. I was talking to my friends who understand the work that I do and asking me questions about it. And I was practising Practice, repetition, 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 repetition. A 100-metre sprinter doesn't just wake up one morning and go, I'm going to be world class. There's a process for them to run four seconds or nine seconds. However, I don't know how fast a 100-metre sprinter runs for. I think it's 10 seconds or nine nine something. <laughs> yeah. But they, how long did they train for? They trained for four years to get to the Olympics to run 10 seconds. And we get into business, we get into life and go, oh, I should be doing all of these things. So, well, <laughs> you got to practice. It's repetition. And it's a lot of letting go of stuff that's not yours. And that's the perfect, perfect place to end this episode. Thank you so much. Gold, pure gold. I hope that lots of women get to hear this conversation because I know so many women are struggling with feeling like they're lost. They don't have a purpose. What is their next step? I don't feel clear at all and you've given some tangible ways that you can start to feel that within yourself and a key part of it is spending time on your own, time in nature, getting to know ourselves and 
such a rewarding journey. So thank you for coming on the podcast, Alexis. I so appreciate you. So very welcome. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on your biggest sale in one day this week. That is a permission slip for all of us. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. And I'm so excited to have you in the Centered for Success 12-week experience with my sister and I. Of course, you're going to, we're going to be talking about this kind of stuff plus relationships. And, uh, yeah, just thank you so much for, for listening. So appreciate you. If you feel the nudge to share this with a family member, a colleague, a girlfriend, please do so if you, if you think that it will benefit them in any way. And, of course, we'll see you in our next episode. Bye. Bye.